If you clicked on this video, you're probably somewhat interested in filming with log. Filming in log is useful because you can utilize the full dynamic range capability of your camera's sensor. The problem is, the log footage just really looks terrible right out of the camera. How do you get back the color and contrast missing from log footage? I've tried several methods myself and have been able to do a couple of them, but somehow I just stumbled across a method that works for me. It's a lot easier to do. It's just a really easy workflow, so I thought I would share it with you. I film in C-Log 3, and I use Final Cut Pro as my video editing software, so this applies only to Final Cut Pro. So in my example, I'm going to work with some footage that I filmed yesterday with the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. This is log footage. As you can see, directly out of the, the camera, it does not look good. It's very desaturated. There's not a lot of contrast. So how do we fix it? First thing that you would want to do is just drag your footage into your timeline. I just grabbed a, a random sample there. You're going to need an adjustment layer, which is a plug-in for Final Cut Pro that you can get from multiple sources. And I think the one that I have came from Motion Array. It was free. Go find you a plug-in for adjustment layers. You're definitely going to need that. Once we've dropped our footage into our timeline, we're going to go over here to our titles and we're going to look for adjustment layer 4K adjustment layer, and we're just gonna drop this onto our footage. So when you first put the adjustment layer on, it doesn't do anything. It looks exactly the same because it's just an adjustment layer. You, you make adjustments to that layer. You don't have to do this method with an adjustment layer, but the way I tend to make a video and trim it into multiple clips, you would have to do the adjustment to each clip or copy the color correction and apply it to the other clip. So it's easier to just do it to an adjustment layer and then you can just fill that adjustment layer over the entire video. So once you've got your clip in here, your adjustment layers on top of it, you'll select it and then you'll go over to your color corrections. I also tend to go into a workspace specifically for color, which has all of the scopes, the Luma, the RGB parade, all that stuff here. Instead of color wheels, go into where it says no corrections, go down to color adjustments. And this doesn't give you the wheels, but it gives you these little bar sliders over here on the right hand side. When you go to saturation and you click and drag this, it'll only drag to 100. These colors still are pretty subdued, but if you click, if you put your mouse over the 100, you'll see the little arrow above and below it. And if you click and hold and move the mouse up or move the mouse down, you can adjust it and it'll go up to 200. 200 starts looking like the correct saturation amount to my eye. Right now it looks a little odd because we still don't have the, the contrast. So this is the part where I go back to my Luma graph here where I can see that my blacks are not all the way down towards zero, which zero is supposed to be black. Anything below that will be crushed and then 100 is uh, your white and anything above the 100 will be blown out. So our, our whites actually look pretty good um, so we can leave that alone, but we've got to get those blacks down. So if you go over here to your shadow slider, you can just drag it to the left until the stuff gets close to the line there. And same thing, you can actually drag it down more than 100 if you want to do that. But what I found, having that set to, to minus 100 and then using black point to bring it a little further down, makes that a sharper looking image. It also brings your your uh, highlights, your whites down just a bit, which is fine because the colors over here in the window are very bright and very white looking because there's sunlight coming in, but sunlight is not 100% white. So that probably should not be all the way at 100. So here, this is actually looking pretty good. And then I like to try to get that teal and orange look that a lot of people try to get in their videos. That can also be done right here in the same adjustment using highlight warmth. You can bump that slightly to the warm side, which I like to make a little too warm, and then offset that by using the shadow warmth and click and drag it to the left, which will bring it more to the blue side. So combined with our warm highlights, the more blue looking shadows gives you that kind of orange and teal look to the video. So we can toggle this off. That was before straight out of the camera body. And then here we are with saturation. Um, everything is, you know, between 100 and zero on our Luma graph. So nothing is crushed in the blacks. Nothing is blown out in the highlights. We have plenty of saturation and mixed with the, 
the uh, warm highlights and the cool shadows. Uh, I think it, it actually looks really pretty good. Hopefully you find that helpful. That's the way that I've been doing my last couple videos with the color correction for C-Log 3. There's other ways to do it. There are LUTs that people use. I like to, to do it myself. I'm not a LUT guy because the LUT is taking someone else's process that works on their videos and just putting it on yours and hoping for the best. But I like to try to dial mine in using the uh, Lumograph and uh, just this color adjustment. Um, that way I feel like I'm more in control. I know more what I'm doing. Canon also provides LUTs, which I've tried those and they work, but I've, I've had some interesting results using their LUTs where I feel like it, it kind of clipped some highlights and, and did some weird things. So I don't prefer that either. So this is a manual process, but it's a very simple thing. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully it's useful. If you like this video, click like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.